is Roas holding you back from growing your brand? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ecom Growth Show. Do I say hi now or do I wait? I'm pretty much brain fried at this point. Let's go. Give us a fire intro, Rob. Fire! Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Ecom Growth Show. I'm your host, Robbie Switzer. Joined with me, the co-CEO of Shopanova, Daniel Stafford. That's me. Oh, I forgot we're filming over there, too, and I'm filming myself on my phone. Um, today's a special day because, uh, you know, for a long time, you and I used to just do these podcasts, just us chatting about business, chatting about e-commerce, yeah. unpacking marketing and sales for e-commerce brands. And then we started bringing in a lot of guests, and that's super awesome. This is be- this is before we were on Entrepreneur.com. <laughs> this is before we had millions of followers and likes. Just us in the room. Before you were slightly Instagram famous. Yes. Oh wait, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of still us, actually. We're yeah. not. We're not famous like, that way. Yeah, I guess I was just more saying it as like a declaration that slowly, so- slowly but surely you will be. Instagram famous because oh, your nice your stories you. are worthy of it. I think, really, yeah. Everybody who who sees them absolutely agrees. You know, some people think <laughs> it's funny. Some people think they're offensive. It's just it's a mixed bag. But well, thank you for saying. Why that. don't you go ahead and plug it right now? Because everybody needs to understand what we're talking about here. Yeah, and I think people get to see not the business side of my life, but my real, authentic, everyday family man, golfer. <laughs> entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> so guys why don't you go ahead and follow me personally daniel t stafford that easy put it in the show notes josiah <laughs> i'm just kidding so yeah it's been it's been super awesome bringing on on guests to our podcast onto the ecom grow show just getting like so many amazing stories of resiliency grit even grace and gratitude, which, you know, builds into that resiliency and, and grit and just, yeah. and just so many awesome stories. And so uh, I've been really enjoying having all these guests on our podcast, yeah, uh, but it's, it's also fun. fun just to, to hop in face to face with, with you, my man, Daniel. And today we're going to unpack, um, we're going to unpack this question is Roas holding you back from growing your brand. That's a big question right now. Big topic. And I'm excited to dive into that. But first, Rob, what the hell is ROAS? (laughs) So for those of you that don't know, we're saying ROAS, it's your return on ad spend. It's simply the conversion value of the orders you're driving through your campaigns divided by the amount of ad spend you're putting into the machine. And it'll it'll shoot you out a number like 0.5 or 2x or 3x which basically means if you're getting a 3x return on ad spend which is what that acronym stands for it means that you've uh you've spent one dollar to generate three dollars in sales it's basically what that means and for a lot of people they love that metric they love having it and you know who really loves having that metric is is facebook themselves yeah and marketers themselves and marketers themselves (laughs) so I mean, we love the metric until recently, if I'm honest. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. And and so here's, we're going to kind of unpack all of this, but, um, you know, our number one focus in what we do and, you know, the focus of this show is just empowering people with tools to grow their online stores. And there are so many metrics you can look at to try and figure out whether or not you're heading in the right direction, whether or not you're setting a good trajectory uh, with your marketing for your online store. And for a lot of people, the return on ad spend uh, metric just kind of served as like a catch all thing. They're Mm -hmm. saying, hey, if this number's high, I'm doing good. If it's low, I'm not. But here's the problem. There's so many pitfalls with this metric. You know, one of them being if you have a high average order value, if you're selling something for a thousand dollars, you're probably going to have a pretty high return on ad spend because it might only cost you 30 or 50 dollars to acquire a customer. And all of a sudden it looks like you're an absolute hero by uh, having a super high return on ad spend. But then you go and you try to scale it and it doesn't work. Yeah. And you're like, well, what's going on? Like my re- my return on ad spend super high. And then on the flip side, if you have a ten dollar product but it's costing you $20 to acquire a customer. 
you're like, dude, I'm, I'm only, you know, I have a 0.5 return on ad spend. I'm, I'm doing so bad. I can never scale this. Yeah. And so there, there's so many pitfalls, you know, just in that alone, but then. Well, also too, for the people that are always just trying to keep the return on ad spend high. And as soon as they scale, it drops down a little bit and then they quit scaling. Mm -hmm. Or is the person that's fine seeing it dip down as they scale, knowing they're hitting more eyeballs, Mm -hmm. knowing they're building their brand and all that. And I'm hope, I I hope Rob, I'm not taking away from our points down the line. No, am I? No, you're not at all. Okay, cool. The brand that's willing to spend more up front and we've talked about this before to acquire customers is going to win they're mm-hmm. going to beat the other brand that's just focused on a high return on ad spend on mm-hmm. the front end and i think that's so important mm-hmm. for people to grasp because we see it all over the place of people ranting raving how high their return on <laughs> roas is right yep. and it's like i don't care about that anymore yeah are you building your brand are you growing your sales and store overall are you building your team yeah and the, the nice thing about it is we're Today, we're going to give you some tools to actually have a proper view of it. So it's not like you're just trusting, you know, what Robbie and Daniel say because they've generated a hundred million dollars for their clients or whatever. We're actually going to tell you like a seven X <laughs> return. No. <laughs> no, we're going to, we're going to actually give you, you know, the metrics that are helpful to look at because business owners are smart, you know, maybe they can ag- agree with you know return on ad spend isn't like the golden metric that i should be following to make all my decisions but they're still like there needs to be something i can look at right yeah, there's got to be something and so a couple quick pitfalls with return on ad spend is attribution is all over the place especially yeah. right now you got ios 14 coming out and uh you know people aren't able to track what's happening in, in apps on their online stores and the websites yeah. and that information thank it, you apple it's just not getting sent back to facebook yeah and facebook's actually made a lot of changes too where they're you know, they're messing with the attribution window and so really quickly um an attribution window is basically trying to uh, put a time frame on when something gets attributed to a campaign or not yeah. Because nobody, very small amount of people, see an ad for the first time of a product they like, click it, go to the site, and buy it. Normally, it's like you're being influenced by marketing for days at a time. You see it, you click on it, you exit out, maybe see it again the next day. And then maybe two days later, you go and you purchase the product. And Facebook's there saying, well, the marketing worked. They would have never bought that product if they didn't see these ads. So how can we give the the marketer or the brand owner, um, it, you know, give them insight into that process? And so they say, well, we'll put an attribution window on it. Meaning yeah. if anybody buys after seven days of clicking or seeing that ad, then we're going to attribute it to the campaign. And so it's, you know, there's, there's some good things about that. I, I believe that it's not just like a, direct click to purchase process every time but then they're like well let's go 28 days (laughs) (laughs) and then you're like well was it and then it gets really complex when you're not only running facebook ads but you're running stuff over in tiktok or you're running your email campaigns and you have all this marketing going out and then facebook saying like if it happened in the last month and we had an ad out it's 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 here and you should invest more money here and so return on ad spends is just merely a reflection of the time frame that you've selected. And you, you do have an ability to kind of select what time frame you're looking at, but there's just a lot of changes going on with yeah. attribution windows, uh, with attribution itself, with tracking. And so you're kind of looking at this return on ad spend and what contributes to that. You know, if you kind of look at the whole picture and you're like, what is this? Like there's so many variables. Can I even trust this number? Yeah. And the answer is, no, you cannot. And so what do you look at? Um, so how do you know if you're growing successfully? This is where you kind of zoom out. You look at the macro picture of your business mm-hmm. and you ask yourself a few questions. Am I saturating the market with my with my marketing materials? Mm-hmm. Are people seeing my ads? Are they learning about my brand? And are they is like my my product getting out there? Am I increasing my sales year over year? That's a very good indication on whether or not your marketing and sales techniques are working for your company. Mm -hmm. Am I increasing my revenue month over month? Yeah. That's another one. 
you know, your return on ad spend might be a one X, but you're profitable and you're growing your revenue month over month. Like you're on a great trajectory. You should have a little bit of confidence in being able to invest more in your marketing as your sales grow. Yeah. And then lastly is my, is the conversion rate on my store? Is that increasing? You know, am I getting in front of the right audience? Mm-hmm. Am I getting my website dialed in? Um, am I getting my landing pages dialed in? My product pages dialed in? Because if you're like putting in the effort there to get those optimized, doing conversion rate optimizations, maybe using a, a service or software like Hotjar to do heat mapping, to actually yep. see what people are doing on your website and you're making adjustments to convert more of that traffic into paying customers, that's a very good sign that you're successfully growing as a brand. Yeah. So you really need to zoom out. And I just can't tell you it, you know, when we kind of go through this and we kind of unpack return on ad spend and the process of what people go through when they're thinking about it, you know, it makes a lot of sense, but I can't tell you how many people are unwilling to scale because their return on ad spend isn't where they want to see it. Yeah. And when I say does isn't where they want to see it, I'm saying like seven X plus. Right. Crazy high expectations, which aren't even realistic anymore. As competition increases, right? As we lose ability to track, you just can't be shooting that high anymore. And dude, I think it always comes back to the two metrics that we always hound on. Mm -hmm. What's your cost per acquisition across all marketing channels? Yep. And what's your lifetime value of your freaking customers? <laughs> what are you doing on the back end to keep them? Because the brands that are focused solely on ROAS upfront, high profit upfront, a lot of times it's short sighted and they're not building mm-hmm. an actual long term established business. Some are, mm-hmm. but we see a lot that aren't too, mm-hmm. that they're just focused on that number and they plateau and they hit a point and they just quit growing mm-hmm. because their ROAS drops, their LTV is no good. And they're like, man. I need to learn how to build a brand now. Yeah, absolutely. So really quick, just to kind of recap some of the things to know if you're growing successfully is basically you're reaching more people, you're increasing your orders, and you're entering the minds of the masses. And I love what you just kind of segued segued us into. And it's basically this idea of if you're doing that, it really starts to open up the conversation of brand development. And before we jump into that, Daniel, I'll be the first to admit that when I get a 15x return in an ad account or or I guess old Robbie, young Robbie a few years ago, when that happened, I was the first one to go out and brag about that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I've taken that to the bank and I'm telling people how good our strategies are because it feels good, dude. It It feels feels super exciting. And and so I don't want to sit here like I'm on a high horse and and say that uh you know anybody who thinks about return on ad spend or puts a ton of weight behind that is you know is an intelligent because that was me you know not very not very long ago yeah totally and uh i think a lot of people fell into that to that trap of just being super focused on return on ad spend as a part of their overall marketing and sales strategy yeah and really just giving it a lot of weight and letting it kind of be this golden guiding metric and you know you learn, you just learn and you adapt. And it's, I think the changes help the changes yeah. with Apple and operating systems and, and Facebook itself. But the real theme of growing an e-commerce store today, moving into 2021 is brand development. Yeah. And it's no longer like you, you can't be a one trick pony. And for yeah. a while, Facebook's algorithm, like it was a perfect storm with COVID happening Everybody's at home shopping. There's this huge pendulum swing toward e-commerce and, uh, and, and everything's working out. You have access to infinite amounts of data. Everybody's at home shopping and a lot of people are doing really well, but that was the yeah. anomaly, yeah, right? And so you can't build a business on that. And what you find is the one trick pony, the people who had like one good strategy, one good ad that worked well on Facebook and got them a high return on ad spend and they'd scale that when that's all of a sudden swept away because we're having, we're experiencing the other side of the pendulum swing. We're actually, though e-commerce is on a, a trajectory to continue rising, we are seeing a dip, you know, and it's the pendulum swing of, you know, people being at home during COVID being locked down. And now everybody's vaccinated. They're out and about, they're excited to go to their favorite stores or excited to go to the mall yeah. and just out, out enjoying life. There's, 
tourism is off the charts right now. Yeah. I know. I know Homer is packed. <laughs> Bro, Homer is packed right now. And, and so it is the pendulum swing and it's the death of the one trick pony. So what do you do? What do I do now? It's diversified traffic sources. It's real brand development. Daniel, what are your thoughts on what real brand development looks like? Yeah, it's interesting because we ourselves for our business pretty much only relied on Facebook and Instagram for lead generation, getting it in. Mm -hmm. Were we building our email list at the same time? Yes, we were. <laughs> but over this last, since these changes went out, we had a hacker come into, anyways, our account kind of got destroyed. We had to re, Nathan, our CMO, had to rebuild our ads. Bless his heart, by the Bless way. Bless his heart. He had to rebuild it all. Went And we're spending a lot, 150000 a month. Uh, and then all of a sudden to see lead volume drop way down, we're like, man, what's going on? And all these changes happening. We had the hacker come in. If we still solely relied on Facebook and Instagram in that moment, we'd have been kind of screwed, right? Mm -hmm. But since we had other channels, we were able to tap into Google, freaking YouTube, email. We're able to still pull in leads and keep our, our sales guys busy, right? Organic. Organic, yeah, yeah 100%. So we're seeing the same thing for e-com stores that only rely on Facebook and Instagram. When that cuts out, they're like, mm -hmm. they, they go out of business almost. They mm -hmm. have to make extreme changes. So what we're seeing is really important is to make sure you diversify, make sure you have a good email strategy, mm -hmm. make sure you're on TikTok or Pinterest, depending on where your demo is, make sure you're on Google, Google shopping mm -hmm. and stay really diversified. That way, as changes are happening, there's always going to be one thing that's working mm -hmm. as well as new platforms coming up that you should be experimenting on at the same time. Yep. Yep, and I'd even I would like to speak to the focus of just delighting your customers. You know, outside of all the technical stuff happening in ad accounts and different different channels and stuff like that, there's something to be said about just developing the right creative yep. and getting it in front of the people and really delighting them and attracting them to your brand. You know, you don't want to skimp on that. You don't. You want to show up. You want to be um, creating ways for UGC to be created yep. by your customers, user generated content, use that on your social, use that in, in your paid ads, everywhere you go, throw that in your emails. And I'm and glad just, you're bringing up content because yeah. it's almost going back to content is king, right? Totally. Before you could slap up an ad with some decent copy and you get sales. Yeah. That's not the case anymore because no. there's competition's gone up. It's like, you have to stand out now. You have to stop the scroll and get people to your website. And how are you doing that? Content strategy. Yep. And then the other piece that I would just kind of really harp on uh, outside of basically being omnipresent with all these different diversified traffic channels and outside of really having great content, it's just making sure your website is set up to sell. Yeah. And there's tools for that. You know, everybody can build a beautiful website these days. Not everybody knows how to take that beautiful website, run it through a process and make sure it's generating sales in the most efficient way possible. Yeah. Again, hot jar, it's your friend. Develop the heat maps. Record yeah. sessions of people shopping your store. See where they're bouncing. See yeah. where they're clicking out. Make sure your buttons are easily navigable. Ooh. <laughs> the way you said <laughs> that was good. And then on the website too, there's a lot of things you can do to increase the average order value, whether you're cross-selling, upselling, bundling. Uh, increase the LTV through subscription packages. And there's all kinds of, you know, Shopify apps for that kind of stuff. But really take care of your website. Put in just as much effort there, uh, ideally, before you're even running ads. Yeah. I don't have anything to add to that. So, guys, the name of the game going into 2021, don't, don't look at ROAS as your guiding metric. Mm -hmm. Focus on brand development and get diversified traffic sources. Yeah. And if I'm a store owner, Rob, I'm thinking, man, now I got to learn Pinterest and TikTok and email. And I got, you know, I got, I just started learning Facebook and Instagram. Now they're telling me I got to do all these other things. Mm -hmm. What's a good solution for someone? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I would definitely point them toward us for starters. I would point them toward Shopanova. You go to shopanova.com, fill out an application. The cool thing about the way we do it is we're always going to, front load our, our relationship by doing a free audit so yeah. 
We'll hop on the phone with you several times, as many times as it takes to understand your business, where you're at, where your your missed opportunities are. We'll do a free audit. You know, this is something that normally costs a few thousand dollars. And yeah. that's us doing our due diligence to make sure we can actually help you before we bring you aboard. Yeah. So we do the free audit and it gives you a kind of a look, a, an intimate look into the way we work and kind of just how we, we interact with our customers. And that all happens before we ever even talk about uh, yeah. a contract. So if that's of, of at all interest to you, all you got to do is got to go to shopanova.com and get in touch with us. There's an application for you to be able to do that. But on top of that, you know, I, I think there's other ways of getting getting this done you know there's other subpar agencies out there you can <laughs> just kidding, just kidding there's there's a there's a lot of good service providers but uh definitely yeah. keep it on the forefront of your mind that um it needs to be like full-on brand development yeah. and and for us 100%. you know i just want to speak a little bit to our own personal experience you know we um you you have to you have to be willing to um, not let your experience hold you back. And it's a painful process and it costs money, right? Yeah. Like we want to do better at Google right now for our company. Yeah. No offense, uh, Nathan, our CMO, I think he would also admit he wants to be doing better there. And so we're looking yeah. at hiring that person, right? And bringing them in house. Yeah. So you can always hire people and bring them in house or you can go to an agency and get kind of like the value of the mastermind and a bundled deal where you're getting you know, if somebody's enrolling for our services, it incorporates, you know, everything from copywriting to creative to media buying email, like all that stuff. And it's a, a really efficient way and a value packed way to get your, your marketing and sales under control. Yeah, totally. For us, it's a little bit different. We try to build that out in house, but the one thing we always say when we're guests on other people's podcasts is don't be willing or, or don't be unwilling to get help if you need it. Right. That's been so huge for us, whether we've hired coaches, whether we've hired people on our team that are actually better than you and I at what we do. Like that's just the learning through experience is the slowest way to learn. So any final thoughts? So, yeah, uh, that's it, dude. That was good. All righty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to get this in the hands of a lot of people. If you wouldn't mind, please uh, rate this, review subscribe it. to it, review it, share it, do all the things, please. See you guys. And we'll catch you next time on the Ecom Growth Show.